few days ago here in Los Angeles took place the Grammy Awards 2020 and pop phenomenon Billie Eilish won five Grammy Awards best album song new artist record and pop vocal album. Billy and her brother and producer Phineas recorded and produced the award-winning album in their bedroom. Everybody knew this. They said that several times. And now everybody's going online saying, hey, if they did it in their bedroom, we can do it too. I can do it too. But can you? Is that the whole story? Let's take a closer look. Hello everyone, welcome back to Mix Plus TV. Hope you're having a great day. Before we start, check the info box down below for my mixing courses on ProMix Academy, special discounts and offers on plugin. And if you want to become a Mix Plus TV member, support the channel, access to exclusive content, click the join button, take a look at all the perks. Pop phenomenon Billie Eilish won five Grammy Awards in 2020 this year for an album that was recorded and produced in her bedroom with her brother, producer Phineas. And now the web is floated with images of the two guys holding the Grammys, and uh, some of them are attributed to Phineas himself, saying to all the guys making music in their bedroom, one day you're gonna get one of these, which is a positive and very hopeful message to give to people, and I'm all for it, but is omitting a couple of things. First of all, this is nothing new. Artists and bands have been producing their music for decades in their homes, in their bedrooms, in their garage. When you have a band, it's kind of hard to practice, you know, in your bedroom. You need a practice room. But pop music today is mostly computer-based, sample-based, and virtual instruments. So you don't really need a space. You're not loud. And in the case of Billie Eilish, they probably had to record just vocals and maybe a couple of synths that you can plug in directly. And her style of singing is very quiet. She's not loud. It's mostly whispering and mumbling. So you don't really need a space. But this is a big deal because of course they won five Grammy and they've been saying that they were working in their bedroom since the beginning. And nowadays everybody has a home studio. So this makes a good story. It makes the best story for all the people making music at home, which are the vast majority today. It's a hopeful message. It's a positive message and there's nothing wrong with it. Yes, this album was produced and recorded in a bedroom. There was only vocals to record but it was still professionally mixed and mastered. If we take a look at the Wikipedia page of the album, we find Phineas at the production, Billie Eilish additional production on Bad Guy, Emmett Fan production on Bitches Broken Hearts, Rob Kinelski mixing, and John Greenham mastering. Nowadays, most producers, and I see it here in LA so very often, produce in tiny rooms whether with small speakers or headphones, but then they go to mix engineers like me or big studios to mix the record and still use both mix and mastering engineers for their production. So of course you can do it yourself. These two guys had great songs, okay? Whether or not you like them, they're catchy and they are number one right now. So they must have done something right, right? So these songs i've always said that being a mixing engineer i've always said this the song is always king all right but that doesn't mean that you don't need everything else to make it sound like a record now this was the technical part the other part of those very positive images which again i'm all for it is that they kind of imply that they went from bedroom to stardom and that is not exactly true. There are a few steps between the bedroom and the stardom. There are untold. And usually those steps require either connection or money, and most times both. So we can find some information on Billy and her family on Wikipedia and try to figure out how they went from the bedroom to stardom. Billy was born in Los Angeles, California, daughter of actress and screenwriter Maggie Bard and Patrick O'Connell. Patrick had roles in Iron Man and West Wing. So both her parents are successfully in the movie industry. Maggie rose to fame as a singer, songwriter and voice actress. Uh, spoke for the heroine of a role playing video games Mass Effect 2 named Samara. Their parents encouraged the siblings to express themselves, Wikipedia says, and Eilish had gone on some acting auditions which she disliked. However, she enjoyed recording background dialogue for crowd scenes and work on the films Diary of a Wimpy Kid, Ramona and Beezus, and X-Men series. Now, 
you understand that you don't just work on films like X-Men and Diary of a Wimpy Kid and others with no context. It's not that you just walk in because you like uh, to record dialogue and they let you. So they were connected, of course, in the movie industry. That doesn't mean that she's not talented or she has not a beautiful voice. It means that on top of that, there were connections. In October 2015, she recorded the song Ocean Eyes, written and produced by Phineas. They released the song on SoundCloud, garnering praise from various websites. Phineas managers has reached out to him in November 2015 to talk about Eilish potential. Phineas then helped Eilish sign to the A&R company Platoon, which helps package artists before they get a major label deal. So again, you see there was already a manager in place and because of their contact, they were able to sign Billy to an a and company. So that's not something that every bedroom musician has. That's important. That's an important missing part. Eilish then got a publicist who connect her to the fashion company Chanel and a stylist, both of whom helped shape her image. These things don't come free. You hire a publicist and a publicist that connects you nonetheless with Chanel that's not a mid-tier company, it's Chanel. <laughs> so again, that tells me the contacts were good. And then the stylist, whether or not that was paid, we can only guess. By August 2016, Eilish assigned to the record label an artist management company, The Dark Room, an imprint of Interscope Records. Justin Lobliner, who signed Eilish to The Dark Room, developed her rollout as an artist, taking inspiration from the model of hip hop, such blah, 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 blah. So again, uh, she signed with a management company, uh, which is part of Interscope Record. And of course, uh, probably knowing Justin Loveliner, he's the one who made it happen. But again, there are connections that not everybody working in their bedroom on their music do have. So what I'm getting here, and we are, there's a lot more, what I'm getting here, these guys were setting up their PR first. All right, that's the most important thing. Then of course you can record vocals and produce the album, which is mostly computer based in your bedroom or whatever you want. Then you get it mixed and mastered and you pass it through the promotional team that will boost it. A video of Eilish performing Ocean Eyes was released in November 2016 and the song was re-released worldwide through Darkroom and Interscope. And because of that, that year, also released the single Six Feet Ocean Eyes, was certified platinum by the RIA in September 2018, picked at number 84 on Billboard in May 19. So there was already a Billboard charting song before this album and this big success, handled by Interscope, Darkroom, and um, Apple. January 2017, Eilish released uh, an EP with four remixes of Ocean Eyes. That is, by the way, a common practice right now and something I will probably do with my artists as well. You released a song which is the main song and you might chart a number 84 on Billboard but then you do four remixes of that song and the EDM world and the uh, dance world has a way faster turnaround for the top 10, top 20, top 40 song. So with the remixes, you have bigger chances of topping the charts, EDM and dance on Billboard than the original song. And then sometimes happens that one of the remixes gets so popular that bleeds into the main chart while the original song is forgotten. So it happened several times. Following the success of Ocean Eyes remixes, Eilish released the track Board as a part of soundtrack of the Netflix series 13 Reasons Why. Again, uh, if you don't have connection, you don't place a sync like this. You don't just make a track and gets picked up by Netflix for one of their shows. You have to have connection for that to happen. Here we get to an important part. Eilish's team worked with Spotify, which promoted her on its most popular playlist, Today's Top Hits. Eilish's commercial success expanded with her Spotify promotion. In September 2017, Apple Music named Eilish their Up Next artist, which followed with a short documentary, a live session EP, and an interview with Zane Lowe on Apple Music radio station Beats One. Again, this to me looks like perfect textbook 
large-scale promotion. The team worked with Spotify directly to promote her on its most popular playlist. Do you have anybody in your team that can work with Spotify and put you on their most popular playlist? <laughs> or uh, having Apple Music name you up next, up next artist of the year or whatever that is. Uh, because of course all these big companies are tied together. They work together. I was at the after party for the Grammy Awards. Like they're all in the same places. So I'm just saying this so that the people at home that wants to go from bedroom to stardom have a real perspective. It's not your music. It's Your music can be amazing. I'm sure it is. So many artists are in their bedroom making amazing music. But if you don't have all this, and granted that this is a lot, I will tell you how much money Universal Record made this year. And she was one of the, of course, top artists. This is a lot. She's number one right now. So this is a lot. There's, a, there's an in-between, between nothing and this. But just so you have perspective, if you don't have all of this or part of this, your music alone is gonna be very, very hard. All right, let's get to the last part, 2018 and present. Eilish collaborated with an American singer Khalid for the single Lovely, uh, which was released in April 2018 and also added to the soundtrack again <laughs> of the second season of 13 Reason Why. Uh, Lovely was certified platinum in the US. She also released the singles Bitches Broken Hearts and You Should Be See Me in a Crown. And the latter was featured on the soundtrack of the video game FIFA 19. She performs at a big pop festival. She releases another single in 2018. She signed a modeling contract with Next Models. She was placed on the 2018 Forbes 30 under 30 list in November that year and released the single Come Out and Play written for a holiday theme Apple commercial again. So you see the commercial moves are 360 degrees, all right? The promotion is so well done. There are collaboration with bigger artists. There is video game soundtracks. There is Netflix soundtracks. There is a modeling contract that because of that, she get puts on Forbes. And then after a month, she releases another single. Of course, you see, like the music is almost literally the last Part, almost the last thing. With that said, that single released was for an Apple commercial, again. In early January 2019, Eilish EP Don't Smile At Me reached 1 billion streams on Spotify, which, which she was collaborating with already, making her the youngest artist to top 1 billion stream on a project. Now, this part of this is organic. It has to be organic, okay? It's not all promotion, she's good. I am in no way say she's not, okay? Actually the opposite. I think she's brilliant. The whole team did an amazing job, so hats off. I would work with these guys any day. I'm producing an artist myself. I look at this and I'm impressed, all right? So, but with that said, you don't do one billion streams if you're not good. You don't do one billion streams and you don't get as big as Billy did if people don't like you, all right? That's a given, that has to be a given. That's be that has to be understood. If people don't like you and you're not good and the promotional team just keeps shoving promotion down people's throat, you only go to a certain level. She's so big, of course people like her and she is talented and she found a niche, all right? Anyway, one billion stream on Spotify making her the youngest artist to top one billion stream on a project. Bury a Friend picked a number 14 on the Billboard Hot uh, 100. Her fourth single for the album Wish You Were Gay was released on March 4, 2019. Picked a number 31 in the US once certified platinum. The album When We All Fall Asleep, Where Do We Go was released on March 29, 2019. For its part in promotion, Spotify set up a pop enhanced album experience in Los Angeles, which included different artwork and a multi-sensory experience of each track for fans. Spotify did it. <laughs> the album debuted at number one on Billboard 200, as well as on the UK album chart, making Eilish the first artist born, blah, 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 blah. And from here, the rest is story. There are already the tours and the Grammy nomination, which we already said she won this year, 2020, album, song, new artist, record, and pop vocal album. So this was at least part of the story of how Billy and Phineas went from bedroom to stardom. 
part of it, of course, because this is just what's available to the public. And I can assure you in Hollywood and in the music industry, there's a lot that you will never know about any artist in general. And that's how things are. Anyway, this wanted to be an informative video. Congrats to Billy and Phineas for the Grammy winning, of course. But I just wanted to give some perspective to all the guys out there that after seeing the pictures of the two guys holding the Grammys and saying, oh, we did it all in our bedroom. I wanted to give perspective because of course there are missing steps between bedroom and stardom. And I hope this helped you guys understanding how important is promotion, uh, which is done before even getting your hands on music or let's say after you have just the demo or a couple of ideas of it, how important are connections and how important are money to invest in, in a career in an artist, okay? A career in an artist is just any other business. You have to invest first, time and money, and hopefully you're investing in an artist that is worth, that is good, that is talented, and hopefully will do well so your investors or you will get the return on investment and the machine keeps going. But yeah, it's almost never uh, a straight from bedroom to stardom just because you are an amazing talent, okay? And of course, if you follow the channel, you know I am myself in the process of producing a new upcoming artist. And uh, so I'm in it myself, you know, I have direct experience. Anyway, this is it for this video. I hope it was useful, I hope you liked it. And if you did, please don't forget to leave a like. If you have any question, leave it in the comment down below. Check the info box before you go. If you want to become a Mixbus TV member, click the join button to see all the perks on how to access exclusive content. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time.